Hello everybody and welcome to a quick video tutorial on how you can go about symbolizing the questions or the responses that you receive in Survey123 in ArcGIS Online. So a quick example of what I mean, uh, here we have our survey questions. So where are you tuning in from? How many years of teaching experience do you have and so forth? And I've symbolized them so they all have a really nice uh, symbology that appears in the legend. And you can see as I turn these on, I've got different colors representing different things. Um, and these are results or survey responses I've received from a survey that I put out to teachers in Victoria. And you can see as I turn them on and off, I got some really great symbology happening on the map. And for something like this it might help to zoom in a bit more to see those circles a bit more clearly. But we're essentially gonna take you through the process of how you can do that with your own survey in ArcGIS Online. I'm gonna head over to Survey123. I've, before, ahead of time, I've created this survey litter in our school, and it's got some basic questions. What type of litter is it? You can see I've got some uh, categories for my students to pick from. From your current position, count how many pieces of litter you can see within a five meter radius. Is there a bin within eyesight of the litter you identified, etc. So I'm gonna symbolize the responses that I might receive in this survey. So I've got a really great um, map moving forward. So let's have a, head over to ArcGIS Online and get started with that. So in ArcGIS Online, I'm navigating from content to my content, and then in the folders down the left-hand side, I wanna find the survey that I've titled Litter in Our School. And I've got that selected here. And you'll see that there are three or four uh, there are three feature layers, and you can see that they're feature layers here in the in the heading. Uh, and this feature layer here, feature layer hosted, is the original feature layer. So we don't want to give that to our students because that will allow them to edit um, and delete data. We don't want them to have that privilege. So we actually want to choose litter in our school stakeholder feature layer hosted view. I'm going to click on that one, and it's going to open up the item page for that. Uh, particular feature layer. And I'll just show you before we open it in a map. If we head over to settings, we can see that under feature layer hosted view, enable editing has been turned off. And we want to ensure that that stays turned off so that our students can't don't accidentally click on a point, a survey point that was collected in the field on the map and delete it. Because if they delete that uh, survey point, it actually deletes off all of our students' maps. So that's why we're choosing the stakeholder option. We're going to just open this in Map Viewer. And our map loads and under content we'll see that our survey feature layer appears. Now I don't have any data here because I haven't yet shared this with my students but you can either go through the process um, of symbolizing everything ahead of time so that you can display it as a really nice map in class or Depending on the students and, and the assessment goals, they might need to do this themselves. So if they're doing it themselves, they can actually click on the three dots here and copy this feature layer or this layer as many times as they want. And you can see that copy appears. So we'll leave that there for the moment. I'm gonna click on the change style icon. If that doesn't appear when you hover over it, you might just need to click on the title of the feature layer. I'm gonna click on change style we're gonna change the attribute being shown to reflect a question in our survey. So if we look at back at our survey, what type of literate uh, is it was my first real uh, question. So I'm going to choose in the attribute table, what type of litter is it? And I can see that it gives me a bit of a legend to start working with. It's assigned colors or circles to each of my uh, types of litter. But I can, if I want to make changes, I can click on options and I can click on the symbols and actually change those colors if I weren't, wasn't happy with them for whatever reason. So I'm going to go with red. I can also change the size. So by flipping from fill to shape, I can increase the size of that circle so it's a little bit more noticeable on my map. The other thing I can do is I can reorder my... Um, my categories in here if I wanted something um, a little bit more uh, I don't know convenient for, for ease of read or ease of visualization 
Once I'm happy with my changes, I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hit done. And I'm gonna remember before I hit done, this is the question that's being asked. What type of litter is it? So I'm gonna hit done. And this time, I'm actually gonna rename that copy to reflect that. What type of litter is it? And now that when, when the data is on the map and my students populate this data for me, I'll have this really great visualization of the types of data in my school or in my local area. So I can just repeat that process of time and again, copy, change style this time, let's choose another one. Um, is there a bin within eyesight of the litter you identified? And this is a simple yes, no question. This time I do like yes to appear first. And whenever I associate a color with yes, I always associate it being green and no uh, as a red. We can hit there we've made our symbology changes. We hit okay. And then the last thing we need to do is rename that. So, um, is there a bin within eyesight? And we would simply copy that as many times, depending on the amount of questions we want to be able to display on this map. Now I'm saying that if I return to my survey, you need to be aware of the types of questions you're asking. So, so in order to symbolize your map effectively, have nice hard symbologies in place, you need to think about the questions you're asking. These have definitive answers to them. A drop down means that the definitive answer. So is um, this question here from your current position count how many pieces of litter you can see. That's going to be a number. It's a definitive answer. Same with is there a bin within eyesight. But this last question, in a single sentence, what recommendation would you make to reduce litter in this area? You're not going to be able to symbolize that question. So you need to think about how you ask your questions. If I wanted to be able to symbolize this question, I would need to transform this instead of a free text question. I might have to give them a couple of categories again to choose from a couple of categories of recommendations. So I could turn that into a drop down, and I'll show you what I mean if I head back over to design in the survey. I have all of these types of questions that I can choose from, but I'm really after things that are like single choice, rating, number, Likert, drop down, these yes, no questions or these definitive category questions. Something like a multiple choice, it's not gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to symbolize that effectively because if someone chooses two or more answers, then how is the map going to know how to symbolize that? So that's something that you need to consider when you are building your survey, but also when you are symbolizing or creating your symbologies in ArcGIS Online. Now we'll go through this once more and I want to um, copy once more. And this time we're going to choose the, the number one. From your current position, how many pieces of litter can you see? And this one, we want to choose counts and amount size. And we can see that that's already selected for us. At the moment, we might, we can't classify our data because we have zero results. But this is a question we would have to come back in and symbolize post survey collection so that you can classify your, your um, classes as, as I've done here in this example. So I've actually waited for my Victorian teachers to answer this question. How many whiteboards do you run within class? And then I've quickly put the symbology together from one through to 10. And so I've done that. If I go back to here, I've classified my data once I had enough results, I could increase the classes here. It's not gonna let me because I have zero in there at the moment. But we wanna choose counts and amount size for that one, which means if, if one student identified 50 pieces of rubbish, then there's gonna be a much larger circle around that particular location compared to a student that only saw three in the five meter radius. So that's a tip for you there. And then a mat, all, all it is is a matter of saving your map I'll save this map now. Um, survey one, two, three, symbology, whoops. Chuck in a tag, training. I'm gonna save the map. 
And then I'm going to return to content. And I'm going to share this and the feature layer to my students. So ahead of time, I want to click on the little share icon. I want to edit group sharing and I'm going to share it to Mr. Lovejoy's year seven geography class. And hit save. And it might ask you, you need to update um, another thing. And I won't update it right now. I'll show you what that means. It's asking us to update this stakeholder feature layer that we opened before. In order for our students to be able to see it, we also need to share that to the group too. So again, just going to share it to Mr. Lovejoy's Year 7 Geography class. And that means when my students log in and create their own maps from this data and maybe symbolize it themselves, if that's um, a task that you're getting them to do, then they'll be able to go to their groups in ArcGIS Online and enter Mr. Lovejoy's Year 7 Geography class group and they will see, oh, I can actually open up the stakeholder feature layer and make those changes myself. So if you're working with a senior class, you're probably only going to share the feature layer with them. And they're going to have to build that symbology out themselves. But perhaps you're, if you're working with a year seven class, you might be doing this all yourself. And you're just going to show the end result in class for them to work off. Um, but essentially, once you've done that, You've created a really nice map that has some really clear symbologies to it um, and is really quite visual and a, a really great tool to aid in discussion, analysis uh, and, and further exploration of your data. I hope that's helped, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks and see you in the next video.